हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे आई एम रियली वेरी लेट सॉरी फॉर दिस लेट पब्लिकेशन प्रोडक्शन एक्चुअली आई हैव ऑलरेडी मैंशन दैट ड्यू टू सम पर्टिकुलर रीजन्स आई एम नॉट फीलिंग वेल बट आई एम ट्राइंग टू कीप माई वर्ड्स सो लेट स्टार्ट विद द लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ द फोक टेल्स ऑफ बेंगाल I'll which uh, this part will be eighth part, but the story, the second story which we were reading, and we are reading still now, on um, the second story under the segment folk tales of Bengal, the name was Fakir Chand, and till now we came to know that uh, the son of the mantri. or the minister son has already rescued the prince and the princess even uh, he has saved his life his friend's life too many times but due to the prophecy of bangoma and bangomi the two prophetical birds he couldn't uh, disclose the last series of his Uh, weird actions which he took uh, took to save his friend it was a series of action like he forbidden his friend to ride on the elephant instead of he insisted so that he can, he uh, he will take the the horse ride then he asked to shatter down the the main gate the lion's gate even he forbidden his friend to have the 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 fish head which was preferably uh, actually fish head is known in bengali uh, language as machher muro fish mach and its head muro and it is usually uh, being uh, served to the main uh, main uh, protagonist in any occasion so even he asked his friend uh, friend to give it to him rather than uh, to the prince and at last even he uh, he trespassed the the bedroom of the lit, uh, the no, uh, new couple and where he killed a big cobra in between that in that uh, incident somehow he, uh, he uh, his friend uh, that is prince woke up and then he started to insist what what is the reason behind all this weird uh, steps he had taken till now so let's start to know what had happened uh, uh, in the next in uh, next uh, segments or in the in the following uh, proceedings of the story he again and again warned the prince not to press him but the prince remained inexorable the minister's son then went to went on to say that while bivouacking under a lofty tree one night he had overheard a conversation between bihangama and bihangami that is bangoma and bangomi in which the former predicted all the dangers that were to threaten the life of the prince when the minister's son had related the prediction concerning the mounting upon the elephant his lower parts were turned into stone he then turned he then turning to the prince said see friend my lower parts have already turned into stone go on go on said said the prince with your story go on go on with your story the minister's son then related the prophecy reading uh, prophecy regarding the destruction of the lion gate when half of his body was converted into stone he then related the prediction regarding the eating of the head of the fish when his body up to his neck was petrified now friend said the minister's son the whole of my body excepting my neck and head is petrified if i tell the rest i shall assuredly become a man of stone do you wish me still 
to go on go on answered the prince go on very well i will go on to the end said the minister's son but in case you repent after i have become turned into stone and wish me to be restored to life i will tell you of the manner in which it may be effected the princess after a few mo- months will be delivered of a child if immediately after the birth of the infant you kill it and besmear ma- my marble body with its blood i shall be restored to life he then related the prediction regarding the serpent in the bedroom and when the last word was on his lips the rest of his body went uh, was turned into stone and he dropped on the floor of a mar- floor a marble image he dropped on the fo- floor a marble image the princess jumped out of the bed opened the vessel for betel leaves and spices and saw there spices of a uh, saw there pieces of a serpent both the prince and the princess now became convinced of the good faith and benevolence of their departed friend they went to the marble figure but it was lifeless they set up a loud lament- lamentation but it was to no purpose for the marble moved on for the marble moved not they then resolved to keep the marble figure concealed in a safe place and to besmear it with the blood of their first born child when it should be ushered into existence in process of time the hour of the princess travel came on and she was delivered of a beautiful boy the perfect image of his mother both father and mother were struck with the beauty of their child and would fain have spared its life but recollecting the vows they had made on behalf of their best friend now lying in a corner of the room a lifeless stone and the inse- and the inestimable services he had re- uh, rendered to both of them they cut the child into two and besmeared the marble figure of the minister's son with its blood the marble became animated in a moment the minister's son stood before the prince and princess who became exceedingly glad to see their old friend again in life but the minister's son who saw the lovely newborn baby babe lying in a pool of blood was overwhelmed with grief he took he took the dead infant carefully wrapped it up in a towel and resolved to get it restored to life the minister's son intent on the remuneration of his friend's child consulted all the physicians of the country but they said that they would undertake to cure any person of any disease so long as life was in him but when life was extinct, extinct the case was beyond their jurisdiction the minister's son at last bethought himself of his own wife who was living in a distant town and who was a devoted worshipper of the goddess kali who th- who through his wife's inter- intersection intercession might be prevailed upon to give life to the dead child he accordingly set out on a journey to the town in which his wife was living in her father's house adjoining that house there was a garden where upon a tree he hung the dead child wrapped up in a towel his wife was overjoyed to see her husband after so long a time but to her surprise she found that he was very melancholy 
that he spoke very little and that he was brooding over something in his mind she asked the reason of his melancholy but he kept quiet one night while they were lying together in bed the wife got up and opening the door went out the husband who had little sleep any night in consequence of the weight of anxiety regarding the remuneration of his friend's child perceiving his wife go out at that dead hour of night determined to follow her without being noticed she went to a temple of the goddess kali which was at no great distance from the from her house she worshiped the goddess with flowers and sandalwood perfume and said o mother kali have mercy upon me and deliver me out of all my troubles the goddess replied why what further grievance have you you long prayed for the return of your husband and he has returned what ailed thee now the woman answered true o mother my husband has come to me but he is very moody and melancholy hardly speaks to me takes no delight in me only sits mopping in a corner to which the goddess rejoined ask your husband what the reason of his melancholy is and let me know it the minister's son overheard the conversation between the goddess and his wife but he did not make his appearance he quietly slunk away before his wife and went to bed the following day the wife asked her husband of the cause of his melancholy and he related all the particulars regarding the killing of the infant child of the prince next night at the same day hour the wife proceeded to kali's temple and mentioned to the goddess the reason of her husband's melancholy on which the goddess said bring the child here and i will restore it to life on the succeeding night the child was pro- uh, produced before the goddess kali and she called it back to life entranced with joy the minister's son took up the re- uh, reanimated child went as fast as his legs could carry him to the prince and princess and presented to them their child alive and well they all rejoiced with exceeding great joy and lived together happily till the day of their death thus my story ended the natya thorn withered so let's uh, complete this um, poem for completing this poem we have to move back to the the first to the preface of this book uh but i must first uh, recite it in bengali it will give you that a sense it will make you happy আমার কথাটি ফুরোলো নোটে গাছটি মুড়োলো কেন রে নোটে মুড়োলি গরু কেন ঘাস খায় না কেন রে গরু ঘাস খাস না রাখাল কেন খড় দেয় না রাখাল কেন রে তুই ঘাস খড় দিস না না কেন বউ ভাত রাঁধে না কেন রে বউ ভাত রাঁধিস না কেন ছেলে কাঁদে কেন রে খোকা কাঁদিস তুই কেন পিঁপড়ে কামড়ায় কেন রে পিঁপড়ে কামড়াস কোট 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 সো লেটস গো লেটস গো ব্যাক টু দ্য প্রিফেস দ্য সেকেন্ড স্টোরি ওয়াজ বেট লঙ্গার স্টোরি সো ইট টুক আস টু কমপ্লিট ইট ফর লাইক টু উইকস ইট টুক সো কনসিকিউটে কনসিস্টেন্টলি উই ওয়ার রিডিং দিস স্টোরি ফর লাস্ট সিক্স ডেজ সো ওয়ার ইজ দ্য এন্ডিং সরি ইট ইজ টেকিং আ বিট টাইম আর উই হ্যাভ এন্টার ইন টু দ্য মেন স্টোরি ফার্স্ট স্টোরি নো উই হ্যাভ এন্টার ইন টু দ্য ফার্স্ট স্টোরি উই আর ইন দ্য প্রেফেস প্রেফেস অ্যান্ড হিয়ার আওয়ার এন্ডিং 
that's my story ended the natia thron withered why you notia thron dost wither why does thy cow on me browse why o cow does thou browse why does thy neat herd not tend me why o neat herd does not tend the cow why uh, does uh, thy daughter in law not give me rice why o daughter in law does not give rice why does my child cry why o child does thou cry why does the ant bite me why o ant does thou bite cut 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 so this is the end of the the fakir chan but uh, the main uh, beauty of this story is i am not going to uh, say any moral of the story if we could come out with a single name of a single character that is a fakir chand and that character was true that uh, the real fakir chand was severely missing from the story and the story was named against that character only that was the beauty which i have found from throughout the story so thank you for being with me thank you for liking my effort my little efforts and thank you for for your presence and thank you for making my this little efforts a daily routine into your uh, into your life and i welcome all of you to listen uh, uh, and we will join again with you with a new poem tomorrow and uh, i will try i will surely try to publish it if uh, within uh, in the morning segment if not then i'll surely i will try to put it uh, within uh, uh, tomorrow but it may delay so thank you and i all wish you a sweet dream and shubh ratri tada